what we have done uh, from the government side is to broad base the needs of the industries. We have now opened industrial parks across Tamil Nadu. What is the benefit of this? So the employment opportunity for a graduate or for a youth will be available within 100 km radius from where he is staying. This is the objective of the government. And so far, we have put a lot of seeds into the ground and we need to wait and see how it emerges. Now, you answer your points of what about the existing factories, existing entrepreneurs, existing micro, small enterprises, what is the government has done to their upliftment? Then the answer is not really. We have not been bothered to take care of the suffering entrepreneurs due to Corona or due to the GST or due to the demonetization or due to the economy slowdown. We have not been able to offer them a helping hand from the government side. The next question automatically comes is what is that the government can do? The government can be an enabler of things, right? See, there are only two things. My profit comes from where? Either from an increased sales or from reduced expenses. In a situation with demonetization or with the GST setbacks or with the economy slowdown or with the corona impacts, the increase in sales have come down. If the expenses do not come down, then my profit will become a loss. And once I become a loss, then those who have betted on me with the money, whether it is bankers, whether it is investors, whether it is uh, the creditors of the suppliers, everybody will start keeping a knife on my neck. So the pressure of the entrepreneur becomes very high. Now, what is that the government could have done? It could have reduced the expenses part of it. How it would have reduced the expenses? Take for example, there are many factories in Ambatur, uh, in Tamil Nadu. All of us were paying fixed charges for the electricity. Whether we open the factory, whether we close the factory, whether we have consumed the electricity or not, there was a minimum charges. And normally the minimum charges are not very small. They are reasonably a high amount for those who have not used the power. Now we wanted it to be waived, but unfortunately it was not waived. Then the second one we were asking is most of the uh, bankers or the lending institution were insisting on creating an additional um, MODT for the collateral for the loans which were extended through the 3 lakh crore famous ECGLS scheme offered by the government of India. Now we were all fighting with the government saying please give us a relief from the scheme but unfortunately the state government announced the relief when most of the people had availed it. So it was it was like uh, justice delayed is justice denied. In this case, justice was delayed and therefore the justice was denied. So even though certain benefits were offered, it was not of much use. Either we have already spent that money or we were not able to use that benefit. Then the third was the unemployment problem. Yes, the government of India said for the formal employees who were covered under the PF and ESA Act that the provident fund will be paid by the government of India. What about the informal people? The state government has the onus upon it in handling the informal workers' necessities, whether it is intra-labor or interstate labor or a migrant labor, the state has the responsibility to look after them. So they have looked after to the extent what is possible. I, mean, I know Tamil Nadu government made arrangements to bring the migrant laborers at different clusters and then ensured a safe transportation to them to go back to their native place. Is that enough? What about their returning back? We have not done. What about their assuring that when they return back such a thing will not be happening? How do we market that Tamil Nadu is a better place for them to come back to us? So the result is we are all suffering without a labor. I'm talking the migrant laborers who are doing semi-skilled jobs and unskilled jobs. We are today finding it big shortage in the market. 
So the result is we managed a little bit with the college students coming and working in the evenings or as a part time. But now with the colleges getting reopened, we don't have that resources. So we still have the biggest challenge. It is like, you know, you can have a car which can go even at 140 kilometers per hour. It's capable of going at a speed. But if the roads are bumpy, then how can the car go at that kind of a speed? So having then a car which can go at 150 km speed is of no use if the roads are not good. So the same way, the state government must have envisaged these problems. Now exporters, to Tamil Nadu is the largest exporter in the country, either in terms of textile bills or in terms of tanneries in uh, uh, Vaniambadi area, Ambur areas. Textile and the tannery and the automobiles are the largest exporters from Tamil Nadu. Now, how we have protected the exporters from? The, today, the cost of the freight is going up. Today, the container shortage is galloping. The clearances are becoming difficult for the exporters. Shortage of materials are being looked at as a serious problem for them to meet their commitments. But have we done anything? Now, there are two things which we look at from an industry perspective. First is anticipate a problem and solve the problem before it reaches. Prevention is better than cure. That is the first step. Then the second step is at least cure when you get the problems. Unfortunately, we did not anticipate the problem nor we did not clear the problem when the disease came and hit us. So, result is people who are not being able to get up are becoming more and more and more in the market. So, unless the government looks after the entrepreneurs of the state, the son of the soil, how can we keep talking about bringing further people from outside the state into Tamil Nadu? This is the biggest challenge for us. The raw material price increase, the manpower shortages, and the infrastructure price increases and uh, these are all which is prohibiting us from the growth or rebooting back after the corona impact and fortunately or unfortunately Tamil Nadu was worst hit with corona also and Tamil Nadu government controlled it so beautifully with a strict control it was available even till 30th of September Interstate, inter-district travels were restricted, interstate travels were restricted and the bus traveling was not available, common uh, facilities were not available. So we were one of the states which had a strictest imposition of the corona lockdown conditions. So on one side you looked after the people, on the other side you looked, did not look after the welfare of the people or the uh, the well-being of the people or the financial needs of the people or the, the, the need to reboot back for them once everything is all right. I think these things must have been addressed parallelly along with every lockdown restriction. The government must have also looked after as much as life, livelihood also must have been parallelly looked after. We missed doing that opportunity, which is what we are witnessing today. See, we have told uh, most of the parties, we have submitted a memorandum of what is the needs of the MSMEs in the state. If you classify them, first and foremost challenge is raw material price increase, raw material availability and quality of raw materials being made available. So we have suggested now that the government is opening industrial estate, industrial park across the state, at every government estate and the park, we should have a fair price ration shops for raw material for micro and small enterprises. You know how the ration card came in the life? the poor people who could not afford buying the provisions at the uh, market rate were rationed and given a supply from the government shops. Like that, like TUCS, we must have a ration shop for raw materials to micro and small enterprises 
which can give them at a reasonable price, at a minimum quantities, at a long payment terms conditions, so that entrepreneurs from the state are able to make use of their facility, complete their orders and do increased turnovers and therefore revenue for the state will also increase. At the same time, profit will come to the enterprises to wipe out the losses in the first eight months of this financial year we have incurred. The second biggest challenge is unemployment. Tamil Nadu is one state which has got close to about 560 technical institutions. We are producing close to about four and a half lakhs youngsters as graduates every year. We have missed their bus of getting employment for 20, 21 years. Now the people are coming out and they need jobs. So what we need to introduce is a, a six months internship program where the government can give them a 6,000 rupees per month as a stipend for six months. Amount is not very big. It is only 36,000 rupees per student, per youth. And that is for six months period. And this will give them industry enabled training, on the job training, and also will help the local entrepreneurs to have manpowers with which they don't have to spend anything. At the same time, they can bounce back to normalcy and it will give them an opportunity to test these youngsters and train these youngsters and build these youngsters for future permanent jobs. We need to do that today. Then the third one is for exporters. The exporters are today suffering with multiple problems. Yarn prices is going up and the participation in foreign exhibitions, foreign trade buyers, and the protection against the dollar exchange rates. All these are becoming problem. Freight transport is becoming a big issue. Containers are becoming an issue. So we need to constitute a separate council at state level to address how we can take the export earning of the state from the present level to two times and three times from now. And we need to invest, the government must invest in creating those enablers so that they have a revenue back with them in their hand. So these three things, if the government does, this will put the MSMEs back into the trail and the problems will be minimized. The fourth one obviously is any purchases with the state government, the up to two crores of purchase, it should be purchased only from the micro and small enterprises which are registered in Tamil Nadu. So when other states are coming up with job for locals, we must come out with orders for locals. Then it will help the people even outside the state to come and set up small enterprises here and supply to the Tamil Nadu government. So government will support also getting order book better. So these are all minor things which if the government does, not much of a financial outflow, but it is more of a support to the people by which the revenue increases will give them the adequate compensation at a future date. This is what we expect the governments to do.